right to expect to be having safe treatment and as nurses that's our responsibility to do that. So I would make sure that when I'm talking about environmental safety, look at your age groups and remember that the majority of your care is going to be teaching and educating the client and the client's family members. It allows you to go back and to go to your interventions and say, did my interventions work to meet the goal that we set for the patient? Was the goal met to alleviate the problem? Remember, we said at the very beginning that the nursing process was systematic and it was cyclic. It means that a problem leads to a goal, a goal leads to interventions, interventions lead to implementations, implementation leads to evaluation. Evaluation eliminates the implementation, implementations eliminate interventions, interventions eliminate the goal, the goal met eliminates the problem. Then I'm just going to cross multiply, okay? So it's 325 x equals 650, okay? Got to get x by itself. Same step we just did a few minutes ago, isn't it? And then x equals two tabs. You can do ratio and proportion either way that you want to. Desired over half or you can do it out long ways to the side. But again, the whole key to doing pharmacology math is to make sure that you do every step, don't take shortcuts, and label, 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 so you understand exactly what it is that you want to give your patient. Okay. the nursing process include that this is cyclic and dynamic rather than static. That means in terms of nursing process, uh, the phases are interdependent and interrelated. And as the patient's condition or uh, status changes, that again, we will modify and um, revisit respective phases of the nursing process. Again, it is client-centered and involves problem solving and systems theories. Again, an integral uh, component with regard to the nursing process is decision making. In addition, we look at this as involving interpersonal and collaborative relationships. Uh, nursing process has universal applicability and again involves critical thinking skills. Again, the model here represents a uh, nursing process with the initial or first step being that of assessing. Assessing consists of collecting data, organizing the data, validating the data, and also to document the data that has been obtained. Uh, there are four types of assessment involved in this. These can include the initial nursing assessment, a problem-focused assessment, emergency assessment, and time-lapsed reassessment. And I will go and give um, definitions and examples of each of these. With regard to the initial assessment, this would be performed within a specified time period. For instance, many healthcare facilities will indicate that with regard to the initial nursing assessment, that this must be completed in a specific time frame, perhaps eight hours. Uh, the purpose of this is to establish a complete database. The second type of assessment is problem focused. Again, with this type of assessment, this is an ongoing process which is integrated with care. For instance, this could um, include the individual's chief complaint, the reason that they presented for health care. And again, we would be looking at a continued evaluation of this. It determines the status of a specific problem. With emergency assessment, this would be performed during physiologic or psychological crisis. So again, this is going to be tailored to the individual situation. It is used to identify life-threatening problems 
and also it is used to identify new or perhaps overlooked problems. And the fourth type of assessment is time-lapsed. You can think of this as being done at an interval. This occurs several months after the initial assessment. And again, it's used to compare uh, the individual's current status to the previous baseline. With collecting data, this involves gathering information about a client's health status. Again, with regard to this, it needs to be both systematic and also continuous. It should include uh, and address the individual's past history as well as the current problem. This that we do a complete re review of systems, also asking about um, prior history of skin diseases. Uh, again, has this individual experienced problems with regard to bleeding or bruising? What is their general skin condition? So again, you will have um, obtained a skin assessment and also incorporated a pressure ulcer risk assessment. Uh, assessing with regard to the presence of possible skin lesions. And again, we want to inquire about any delayed healing of any sores or lesions. Um, beginning with inspection and palpation, again, uh, assessing the uh, skin for color and distribution, assessing with regard to skin turgor. Keep in mind with the older, older adult that they will have decrease in terms of elasticity, so it's preferable to go and assess the turgor over the sternum or even the forehead. We also need to assess in terms of the presence of edema, and with regard to edema, um, one plus edema equals a depth of two millimeters, two plus um, edema equals a depth of four millimeters, three plus edema is a depth of six millimeters, and four plus edema is a depth of eight millimeters. Again, you may also, um, with edema, uh, this could be uh, described as generalized versus, again, being localized to a specific area of the body. In addition, we need to uh, note characteristics of any skin lesion. So again, one of the things you can do is the A, B, C, D, E mnemonic. Uh, that is A, looking at the lesion for asymmetry. B is describing it in terms of the border. Is it circum uh, circumscribed? Um, C is with regard to color, D is the diameter, and E would be with regard to evaluation or elevation. So again, um, a macule would be flat, a papule would be raised. Again, is it a wheel or a hive? Um, so again, um, you need to be descriptive with regard to that. The next is that you want to pay particular attention to any areas that are most likely to break down. So again, we know that the bony prominences, uh, the elbows, the heels, the ischium, um, the sacrum, these are areas that are particularly vulnerable in terms of pressure. With regard to untreated wounds, again, you want to go ahead and document in terms of the location, the extent of tissue damage. Again, um, you need to be uh, specific with this in terms of your initial assessment. We want to um, record in terms of the length, the width, and also the depth. Is there bleeding present? Um, is there a foreign body in the um, wound? Um, the other would be in terms of are there uh, vermin such as maggots? And the other is, are there any associated injuries with that? And then we also need to confirm the individual's status with regard to their tetanus um, immunization. The other would be in terms of treated wounds, and again, with this still documenting the appearance, the uh, size, drainage, the presence of any edema, as well as pain. And if the individual has any uh, drains or tubes present, again, we want to know the type. Um, if, in fact, they are self-contained as far as suction to gravity, or may they may, in fact, be connected to some type of suction device. Um, in assessing our pressure ulcers, again, it's very important that you document the location of the ulcer in relation to a bony prominence. Also, we are looking at measuring the size of the ulcer in um, millimeters or centimeters. And again, this is very important for baseline. And usually in a long-term care facility, we will go ahead and document um, or reassess this at least once a week. In addition, you want to go and determine if there's any undermining or sinus tracts, um, the stage of the ulcer, and also the color of the wound bed. 
with regard to the stage of the ulcer, keep in mind you can't stage the ulcer.